watching Morning at NTV. Well, it's an all new morning at NTV. Of course, the mission is to turn on your world. And we have decided that every single Wednesday we'll be looking at today's woman. My name is Priscilla Regina Naloga, and welcome once again if you've just tuned in. And we're definitely excited to look at building a political career as a newcomer. This newcomer is not new to your ears, nor your faces. Uh, she has been around, but now we have her in studio to give us an insight of her journey that she started way back in high school, uh, being a star, a leader, and how her leadership has actually caused her to achieve the big things that she has achieved today. Her name is Shamim Malende. Good morning to you, Honorable. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, actually, all the viewers, I wish to use this platform to say good morning to all of you. And uh, Priscilla, I'm pleased to be part of this show. And thank you for hosting me and the entire staff and management of NTV. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, just so we, you know, sneak bit into when you became a member of parliament. Yes. What did that feeling, how did you express that feeling? What was it like for you to finally get to parliament? Oh, wow. Uh, it's really a good feeling uh, because first and foremost I looked at the trust and the confidence that the people put in me, uh, the voters. So you feel good that there is a community of people that can put their trust in you to be their leader, to deliver uh, their message uh, up there and to be their voice, to speak up for them and to also act on their challenges. So. It really felt good. It was a challenge for me. It is still a challenge for me. But I thank God that he gave me that opportunity to serve the people of Kampala and the people of Uganda. But also, secondly, it's challenging in a way that you inspire very many people. The young girls, uh, the girls out there, those ones in schools, the women who are struggling in life, uh, those ones who have reached up there, the corporate woman, but they, they, they want to learn one or one thing or two from you. And everyone is always asking you, how, how did you manage to reach there? And my answer is always one to, to all the girls out there, whether in the ghetto or wherever, that just reach out to people. Just be good to people, help the people out there. Use all your potential to help people out there. A leader is not imposed on the people. A leader is selected by the people. So that is what I can tell them. So it feels good that people have put your confi the conf their confidence in me and it is a challenge that I have to keep Mm -hmm. to their side and also speak their voice. All right. Uh, we do understand the leadership conversation that you are pulling up. Mm. Uh, leadership is not really position. Yeah. Leadership is where you are and what you can do exactly. to change society and communities. True. Now, why did you choose politics as your form of leadership? Well, what I can say is that uh, I did not actually start with the politics. The politics actually it found me on the way when I was actually leading and doing other things. Uh, for example, all my life I have been using my, my capabilities and all my resources to reach out and guide the girls, guide the young men, uh, guide my family members on what best we can do to have a better country, to have a better life how to achieve and work hard without expecting even having any platform to, 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 to address or to, 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 to put these challenges even further, all these ideas actually further. But also, uh, I have been reaching out as a lawyer. Uh, when I started in my law firm at Malera and Company Advocates, I decided that one of the areas I noticed that very many people could not access lawyers because they were not able to pay the fees. To afford the fees. Yes, yes. to afford the fees. So I noticed that there, there is a very big gap there. And I said, yes, Shamim, you started to make money, uh, to use the law to make money. But again, law is beyond the money. It, it's a call to fight for justice. So I said, why don't I you know, step in this gap and try to see how I can help the suffering people, the women, the girls, the men out there, the, you know, the people who cannot afford. And then I started pro bono services. In my law firm, I, I created a department for pro bono services. I used to do for women, for even before I joined the politics. So when the uh, Chagulani era came, uh, when 
uh, I saw uh, the political prisoners and all those innocent ghetto boys and girls and people who have a passion for their country. I said this is a grand opportunity. Yeah, because we, we, we do remember you in yes. your political campaigns. You actually were advocating a lot for rescuing detainees, yes. uh, you know, prisoners and issues like that. That's what yes. you were actually very passionate about. Yes. And are you still doing that? Yes, actually. I have been doing pro bono services in my law firm behind closed doors even before I, I came to the political right. scene. But now when I came to the political scene, because uh, these cases, uh, they would attract a lot of praise and attention and the parents are looking out for their uh, sons and, and what, and the husbands are looking out for their wives and you know, so the, the attention was there. But it, it, it just found me there because I said, let me rescue these people without paying a fee. I don't ask for transport. I don't ask for anything. I just use my meager resources to f put in the car that I had to jump on border borders and ensure that I offer this free legal service so that I can contribute something to the struggle, contribute something to the suffering Ugandan using my profession. I have been leading in many aspects. And by the way, even when I was way back in high school, um, all the positions I got of leadership, usually I would be uh, voted actually even in absentia or unopposed. I don't know how it always happened that it's way. It's an anointing that you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, leadership a, is not imposed. I yeah. realize that leadership, it is the people it's, who choose you. Mm -hmm. They say, let her be our leader and you become the leader and you have to lead by example and that is why for every leader you do not have to backstab but leadership is everywhere in an organization in a home how you manage workers how you manage you know everyone so wherever you are you are offering leadership okay so you just have to use the best that you can so that you create a good environment for the people and you also accept to be corrected when you're wrong. It Speaking makes you of person. leadership, uh, we do know that, uh, you know, as a member of parliament, people sit in parliament, you mm. want to sit in for the 11th parliament, want to sit in for the 12th parliament, you probably would want a third term, wouldn't you? No, the issue actually is not so much about the terms. Uh, myself, that whether I'm going for the second term or a third term, but I'm looking at you know, actually, it's a challenge. People have entrusted you with leadership. What are you bringing on table? How are you impacting on their lives? And they have expectations. Uh, uh, they have expectations. They say, Shamim, we sent, there, we sent you there. And what we want first is you have to remain on track. Don't betray us. Don't backstab us. So that is the first thing. And that one I have maintained. Secondly, you have to speak up for us. You have to use all the legal fora that is there to ensure that you speak for us. We have raised motions in parliament. We have talked about the bad laws. We are still doing a lot. Yesterday we laid the ministerial, alternative ministerial policy statements. And as a shadow minister of justice and constitutional affairs, I also laid a mine. So it, it's not about the terms, but it is what you deliver during your term, what legacy are you going to leave behind? And that also um, uh, brings about the other issue of even the way how I joined even the parliament. How did I end up in politics? It, because I was serving on pro bono services, and, and, and people said, but Shamim, since you know um, legal. Yes, since you, you are legal, mm -hmm. you have interfaced with us, you know the challenges we, we, we face, and even you have also seen that with justice alone, Eh? When you are not in a power, when you don't have the power to influence the laws that are passed, even if you stand there in a court and talk and talk, eh? sometimes you have not. So you must be part of that process. Okay. Come and do what? So that's how I actually ended up in so politics. So it's not and about. I was by my party mm -hmm. to represent them. It's not about the many times terms you sit in office. It's about the impact of it's that time when you're in office. Yes. So then this drives the conversation of affirmative action seats like the one you're sitting in mm. right now as a woman member of parliament. Mm. And then what do you think of those people that hold on to them for maybe, say, more than two terms mm. and they stop delivering? Mm. You know, with leadership, it's about you and that confidence and trust that the people have put in you. So first, even before you look anywhere else, you have to first look at your mandate. What is your relationship with the people? What did they send you to go and do there? And are you delivering? Are you not backstabbing them? Because as a leader, you must do what is within your means to deliver to your people.
So you, my mandate is limited to doing what is within my means and it's what is legal and practically possible for me to deliver for the people of Kampala and even other people. So as a leader, that is the first thing. So this other issue of the terms, whether you come back the second term, the third term, I, like I said, I think a leader is chosen and not and not imposed. But I'm, I'm one of the persons that subscribe to, to, to the fact that we must create spaces for other people to come. Because if, if, we say, if I say that, Shamim, um, you know, I'm the best, I'm the only person who can be in Kampala for 20 years, that would not be good for my country, even where uh, people would still want me. So you have somehow to have some limit on when you can say that I can serve maybe one term, I can serve two terms. And, and pave way for what, other women. And pave way for other women. Actually, it, for, for us, mm. the women, and even for any leader, the best thing you can ever do is to build others because it inspires you. Uh, one time we were attending a training and um, it was um, uh, being uh, uh, deliberated upon and uh, the, the, the main speakers were the Honorable, the Honorable uh, Winnie Kiza. Uh, the Honorable, okay, the First Lady, Barbara Itunga, Itungo Chagulani, I was going to say Honorable, but she's our First Lady, and uh, the Honorable Miriam Atembe. And they said something in, 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 in agreement, all of them, that you know what? When you're seated there in those positions, how do you, how do you bring service on table? How do you use your position to advance? to advance the, the, the space for the woman, okay. for the girl who is suffering. How do you bridge that gap? You know, they said a lot of things and they make a lot of sense. So we are saying that if you are in leadership or wherever you are, you are supposed to use that position to say that you advance the voices of the oppressed, you do not backstab them and you ensure that you remain on course. Okay. All right. Today's woman with uh, a member of parliament, Shamim Malende, and we're talking about building a political career as a newcomer. Now, speaking of newcomers, uh, recently, of course, with the passing of Right Honorable Jacob Olana, mm -hmm. the seat was empty and it had to be filled for the 11th parliament to then continue on with uh, the state's affairs. And you were in the speakership press as far as the opposition is concerned. Your manifesto was about parliament that puts the agenda of the people at the forefront. Isn't that what Parliament has been doing? You know we have a challenge. We have a Parliament, uh, but our people feel detached from that Parliament. They vote, they elect their leaders. And for example, if you have voted for me, Shamim Malende, go to Parliament and represent me, speak my voice as the Kampala person. When I reach in that Parliament, the people expect to hear their views on the floor being deliberated upon and being debated and even coming up with solutions. What people hear sometimes is different. They hear issues of how to solve grudges within their, how, you know, raising monies for other things. So the challenge is that the parliament that we've been having and, the par and what we are fighting to change is to change a parliament from a pro-executive parliament to a pro-people parliament. The world believes out there, Ugandans believe out there that parliament passes laws in the interest of the executive. These laws do not emanate from the people. The, the views of the people are suppressed and not put at the forefront. That's why when I came into the speakership race as one of the aspiring candidates for the position of, of speakership, uh, well, that was my one of my first agendas because I wanted to see that we bridge the gap between parliament and the vendors and, 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 and the voters. And I will tell you this is a statement of fact. Most of our people do not even know what happens there in the parliament. They don't even know how parliament I mean, all, all we see and is uh, you people arguing and fighting over self-interest, yeah. uh, over how much money you're going to get for your cars, your allowances, so, things that benefit you as members of parliament, but don't benefit us as constituent members. Yeah, so those are some of the things that we are looking at. And we are hoping, we are saying it's not too late. We are saying that even these, uh, our new leaders that have been put there, we are saying it is not late to change some of these things that 
can we start rethinking and say, okay, the executive can bring something, but what is the voice of the people? Why don't we emanate these laws from the people? For example, the people have been complaining about high taxation. Uh, they have been complaining about the skyrocketing prices. They are complaining about so many things, the health conditions. Can't we put these things at the forefront? So that is very important, and that is one of the things that we're looking at. And you know that very many Ugandans actually know that with a parliament changed, but without the executive changed, they feel actually it is useless mm -hmm. at all. So, but as the opposition and people who are pro people, because I, I, I know that even in the, in the NERM, the ruling party, there are people who are saying, really, there are certain things that must change. Okay. So I'm saying that for people who are looking at changing that parliament, everyone who has that heart for ensuring that we change the parliament, this is the time to act. Well, speaking and of which, um, uh, let's look at the laws, the policies mm, that mm. are on table right now concerning women's rights, uh, mm. concerning women in this country, mm. and how far are we from actually attaining them into reality applicable mm. laws that get to protect women in this country? Actually, actually let me, before I go there, uh, let me address this thing so that the viewers can understand right. it better. That parliament is operating like that eh? because there is a system that parliament follows. For example, if I want to bring an issue on the floor affecting the people of Kampala, for example, the eviction of the hawkers and the vendors, the vendors. or uh, how you know they want to throw off the border, border riders and the tax operators, the issues of the point is to make Kampala a smart city, isn't it? Okay, you, you, yes, it's okay, but as a platform, we must use this platform to air out the views of the people regarding some of these programs that are being what? But the parliament is like that because as a Shamim Malinde, you have no right to stand on the floor of parliament and say anything when the speaker has not allowed you. Okay. Actually, you have to book first with the speaker or the deputy speaker to have anything on the floor. That is why the position of speaker and deputy speakership is so important because under our rules of procedure, they have a lot of power and can determine a lot of things. Now, going to the policies, you asked about the challenges and you asked about the challenges affecting the, 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 the policies and what is stopping them. Well, we have some policies that have been passed. For example? And, but and we, we have pr progress that is being made. For example, w the, the, the issues of ensuring that, you know, we have women in positions of leadership, it's there. But again, we have issues and, and of course, issues affecting women are being discussed all over the globe. Even your son, women such as gender-based yes. violence, which is a big one, having exactly. esca escalated because Ex of COVID-19. Exactly. Yeah. But now we have to look at the solutions because we are saying if we have women in power, we have this this you know uh, gender whatever. Now. The question is, why is it that women, the, 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 the rate, the gender-based violence, the, you know, the rates are, what, gender-based violence uh, rates and all that, they are going high. Why is it that issues affecting women are on the increase, domestic violence is on the increase? So we have to ask ourselves. So we have realized that there are issues that we must address. We have women in power, but again, we also have to ask ourselves, do these women have the power? To, 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 you are in power, but you have the power to implement. Then, for example, if you have a speaker who is a lady, you have a vice president who is a lady, you have a prime minister who is a woman, the question is, what is their, the priority? The, mm. What are their priority lists in their dockets? So those are some of the things that must, okay. be, looked, uh, All must right. be looked at. Uh, you had a recent interaction with the Muslim community women here yes. within Kampala, and you were addressing rights of women yes. in Islam, but also you were talking about women's rights and the Constitution. Mm. One of the things that befits us Ugandans to enjoy democracy mm. and to enjoy the things that are rightfully ours is ignorance of information. Yes. We don't have that civic education uh, for people to then stand up upon and defend mm. themselves, protect themselves and otherwise. So as a woman member of parliament, how are you addressing these challenges, especially on the side of women and how best can we bridge the gap between formal and informal uh, women of today? Actually, when we had that interaction with the Muslim women, uh, that's one of the things that we looked at. How do we bridge the gap between the informal woman and the formal woman? How do we bridge the gap between the educated woman and the uneducated woman? How do we bridge the gap between a woman in leadership and a woman who is not in leadership? Between the ghetto girl and the corporate girl? So those are some of the issues we're looking at. So now, 
We, as the Office of Women Member of Parliament, we have embarked on a campaign, eh? and we are calling upon even all other stakeholders to do this civic sensitization, self, you know, self-imposed. We have imposed ourselves there, and we are saying we're going to use our office to ensure that we sensitize the people and ensure that we bring, we, we spread the knowledge everywhere, wherever it is supposed to go. And we are calling upon even other stakeholders and all other women to be part of it so that we can educate the women to know where they can go if they have issues and how we can help each other. And the most important thing, Priscilla, we have to learn to use our potential. If I'm a woman member of parliament and I have some, some excess, you know, uh, products, why don't I donate them to this other woman right. who is giving birth? We have women who can give, deliver from the USA. Why don't you help reach out to this other woman who cannot actually okay. afford a clinic? All right. So as the women, mm -hmm. we must, you know, be the each other's keeper. Yeah as we press government to also help us and reach out to the woman. And that is how you build a political career as a newcomer. Shami Malenda, thank you so much for honoring us with your presence here. A woman member of parliament, she's using her position to advocate for not just women, but people in Kampada so that they can have a better lifestyle and enjoy their money's worth. Uh, we will invite her on another day for another discussion all together. But I hope that you've picked up something. Leadership is not really position. Leadership is exactly what what you are doing at that time in that place to that person and that is the form of leadership that this country needs. Uh, morning at NTV does continue shortly. You're watching Morning at NTV. Did you know that the Building Industry Management System, BIMS, will enable architects to confirm submitted architectural drawings, commit to supervise constructions, and